hey. <laughs> Surface tensions. Man, I'm excited about today. This is our third week in this series. Um, we got a couple more to go, but we've been talking about what happens when, it, when, when we decide to allow the Holy Spirit, allow God himself to lead us through some of the surface tension in our life, some of the things that might push us back away from the presence of God. And we push through those things and we allow him to lead us into the depths of his goodness and his love and his mercy and his grace. By the way, the very things that we have been singing about and praising God for, this morning. So do you believe what you've been singing? Really? Because he's here with us. His presence is here. And we get to experience this uh, together today. I'm so glad you decided to show up this morning. Um, I want to introduce you to somebody very special to our family. All right, this is uh, Sadie. Let's go ahead and see. Ah, yeah. Sadie's a golden retriever that uh, we acquired, um, was gifted to us back in February. We love her very much. Um, after we lost our uh, previous dog, Maddie, of 13 years, Sadie came into our life. And I want to promise you something, okay? Sadie is well taken care of. She is loved. She is spoiled. She doesn't have a care in the world, this dog, okay? But for some reason, um, I don't even know why, but I'm thinking, man, something's glitching in her mind. Like she's got something wrong with her brain. In, f in fact, instead of naming her Sadie, we should have named her Scaredy. <laughs> because this dog is afraid of everything. Like, like everything. You crinkle a paper bag in our house and she runs through her bed. Um, she is afraid of uh, remote controls. She's afraid of pillows. She's afraid of her own food which is why she's so skinny. Uh, it's, been, it's been amazing. In fact, walking her the other night, um, we literally, I saw a bunny rabbit on the, on the side. I said, uh oh, get ready for it. This dog is gonna chase that bunny rabbit because that's what dogs do, right? Uh-uh, not Sadie. She, the closer we got to that rabbit, she saw that rabbit jump and she took off the other way like it was the craziest thing in the world. The other night we were walking down and um, I'm, I'm, in the neighbor, I'm right on the neighbor's yard and maybe this has happened to you guys. And to be honest, it scared me too. The sprinklers decided to click on right at the moment we were walking by the road, <laughs> right by the yard. And, and that thing kicked on and I was like, oh, you know, but she took off in front of me. No kidding, this dog is afraid of her own shadow. The moonlight was hitting us a couple weeks ago and it shined her shadow on this white fence along the side of the road. As we're wa I need to just stop walking her at night. This is getting dangerous. <laughs> she sees her shadow and jets in front of me and almost flipped me over her leash to get out of the way. This is, this is the, I think she is the only dog I have ever met that needs her own therapy dog. <laughs> like she just full of this up. There's something wrong with it. But before I'm hard on Sadie, I've got to admit, I've got fears too. I've got fear, and you probably do too, if we're honest. There's things that we're afraid of. There's things that freak us out. And she gets freaked out over things uh, because she's a dog and I get freaked out over things because I'm a human and I'm a person who's, have ex who's had experiences in life. And so have you. In fact, these past couple of weeks have been kind of crazy. If you've turned on the TV at all, you know, in your heart and in the back of your mind, maybe even in the front of your mind, there's a little bit of fear because there is a war going on in Israel. And we need to be praying for each and every person involved in that war and for peace. That fear, the fear that we might experience and understand will lead us to pray, develops compassion in us, I hope. This is real life stuff. I think of last week when the tornadoes came through and, and they were hitting on the south of us and they're hitting on the north of us and, and that alarm went off in the middle of the night and it's like beep, 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 you know, and how many of y'all got that shrill up the back of your spine like what is going on, you know, and they're like texting you and emailing you and phone calling you and letting you know to take cover and that's a real fear. I think about High Point just a couple weeks ago when Ed Mead was murdered in the guard post there in our own community. I know maybe you didn't know about this, but it was a, it's a, it's a big deal. And we were praying for that entire community. Many of those residents spent the night in fear because they didn't catch the killer until the next day. And that is fear. You, you can feel the tension, can't you? There is a tension when it comes to this fear. In fact, there's tension in a lot of things that we experience in life that if we're not careful, will keep us from going into the deep with God. And that's what this series has been about. It's about understanding that tension's part of life. 
And today we're gonna talk about this specific thing, the fact that we can see that we can break through the tension of fear and, and, and truly experience God's love, the depth of it. We can have a life of trust. And I want you to remember that word, trust, where God can do more with us and in us and through us than we ever imagined possible. But in order to do that, we need to break through the surface tensions, even of fear, and experience true kingdom life in Christ and the depths of God's goodness. So I'm gonna ask you this morning, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Uh, maybe it's not something deep or crazy or whatever. Maybe it's just something um, kind of fun. I'm gonna invite you to uh, look in your bulletins this morning. Check out these uh, bulletin inserts, okay? There's all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, sermon notes. And there's a question that I'd like you to answer. What are you afraid of? Um, we can do this verbally with each other. Or you can write down your answer if you're not comfortable talking to your neighbor. But just go ahead and take about 30 seconds and share what are you afraid of? Or another question is, um, what causes, like, what... Do you ever get a case of the what ifs? Like, I'm thinking about doing this, taking this trip, eating this food, going to this place. But what if this happens? And what if that happens? And we start overthinking. I need to have this conversation with this person. But what if they do this? Or what if, what if, what if? And if we start overthinking. Anybody else? Is this just me? All right. Go ahead and talk about this for about 30 seconds with your neighbors or write down your answers. What are you afraid of? And do you ever get a case of the what ifs? And I'll come back right in a minute and we'll go a little bit deeper into this. <clears throat> Don't be shy. I know it's a good conversation. It's a good way to get to know other people too, because a lot of us have common fears, right? Like we kind of, we find common ground in our fears sometimes. Uh, I'll be honest, um, I, I'm afraid of needles. All right, anybody else like kind of like that? Like not really afraid of needles. It's when the what ifs start clicking in. Like I know needles, like I'll get vaccination shots and I'll give blood and things like that. But man, I start thinking about it too long. And I go back to my like 12 year old self who liked to pass out thinking about getting shots. And also my 35 year old self who passed out after he got a shot. But that's beside the point. Needles, uh, you know, but what if this, what if that? Um, Maybe you've got something like that. It's kind of like a surface fear, you know, but it's not like a real deep kind of thing. If you just stop thinking about it, then it kind of goes away, right? Uh, and then there's like real deep fears. And I think, okay, this is something we need to talk about. We need to dig deeper into. And we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit today. But the fact is we all live with at least a little bit of fear. And the fact is fear is a helpful emotion. I mean, really. I mean, it really, it's, it's God built fear into our wiring to help us survive in life. Like going back to the tornadoes, I'm personally glad that I have a little bit of fear of tornadoes so that I take cover when I hear that there are some. If I'm not afraid of those things, I might get hurt, All right? I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I have a fear of running out into the middle of traffic in front of a car because cars usually win that battle, right? Um, healthy fears is something that help us, helps us survive uh, in life. When we think about it, um, it, it's actually helped most of us get to where we are uh, today. And the best fear of all is probably no secret to any of us. And the Bible says it over and over and over again, that we are to fear, we are to be in awe of God himself. In fact, the fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom. That is the healthiest fear, the best fear to have of all. But fear, fear can also paralyze us. 
Fear can control us. It can steal our peace. If we're not careful, fear can consume us. It can consume our thoughts. It can consume our time, our energy, our conversations. And it starts to steamroll right before our eyes. Fear can make us doubt. It can make us doubt ourselves. It can make us doubt the people around us, people that we don't even need to fear. In fact, fear can also create doubt in God if we're not careful. Fear can, can make us angry, skeptical, limited, and keep us on the surface, keep us on the surface of life, afraid to go deeper or do anything if we're not careful. So yeah, fear, and, and it's real, it's legit. I mean, you guys look, I don't wanna minimize fear at all. Like we talk about it and we think, oh, just fear, make it go away. Look, I understand that's not always the case. I don't wanna minimize the emotional and many, many times chemical reasons, chemical reasons that we have fear. We understand that. But we also can't let our fears define us. We cannot allow our fears to shape us and we certainly can't live in fear, especially in our everyday life, especially when it comes to our spiritual life. See, the Bible mentions fear hundreds of times. God is concerned about this subject. He is concerned about fear and how it consumes us. He even uses the phrase fear not over 360 times in scripture. He cares about our fears. But God's message to us is that fear must be put in its place or it can control us. It can hold us back and it can keep us on the surface of all God created us to experience in him to be and to do in Christ. But, but if we can look at the surface tension of fear for what it is and put it in its place, we can experience the deep, unconditional love and goodness of God. And it starts by trusting him, even in the face, even in the face of fear, even in the midst of fear, we can learn to trust God. That's the key to it all. Trust. 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 So breaking the tension means trusting God in the midst of fear. And what I'd like to do is take a look at a passage in the Bible that's uh, become very special to me. Of all the places in the Bible that addresses fear, I want to go ahead and focus on just one, and it's Psalm 27. Psalm 27. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open up the Psalm 27. There should be one in the chair in front of you. We'll have some words on the screen as well, but it should be right about the middle of your Bible, right about here. So go ahead and open Psalm 27. And I want to tell you, of, uh, again, of all the passages about fear, uh, there's a specific reason that I chose uh, this one today. And here it is. Uh, this year, uh, this year when I came off sabbatical and uh, I... I decided that I was going to read through the Psalms uh, one at a time or even slower if I needed to and journal through the Psalms, spend time meditating on them. And, uh, and I got this Bible uh, from a friend of mine that actually has uh, these graphics in there. Have you guys seen these? Like they're just kind of verses that they pick out and you can, uh, I like to color them. I like to meditate as I'm tracing the letters, you know, kind of a nerdy thing, but it, it's cool for me. It helps me relax. Anybody else? I don't know if you've seen these. So, so they've got these and I'm, you know, a couple weeks ago, or I finished off the book of Psalms and I'm done. And I'm sitting in my Sabbath, I'm sitting in quiet and I'm like, okay, God, what am I going to read next? You know, where are you going to lead me to? And, uh, I kind of feel like God told me you're not done yet uh, with Psalms. Go ahead and take another look. And weirdly enough, see if you forgot to color or trace any of these <laughs> coloring graphics. So I'm looking through there and I've done all of them except for one, Psalm 27. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start I'm going to read, I'm going to meditate, and I'm going to trace and color this Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. So I read through Psalm 27, and it begins to come alive uh, to me in a different way and very special to me. In fact, I want to read uh, my journal entry. I'm not going to read the one from January when I first went through it, but this was just a couple weeks ago. It says, uh, I wrote this, I turned here because of the uncolored verse on page 83. Just flip to it. And of course, 
God led me to a passage directly related to the sermon that I plan to preach in two weeks. And in light of the many people struggling with health issues, prayer requests, difficult times, financial, emotional, all the things, one thing I ask. See, this is a powerful Psalm. Praise the Lord. So I sit, I think of the flock that I shepherd under the good shepherd. So I rest and I reflect. I pray for them. I pray with them, with the spirit. This is great affirmation. I told Mary Lou last week, whose husband has leukemia and she is caring for him. In tears, she asked me for scripture to read. I'm so proud of her and praise God for that question. She asked for prayer, for scripture, for support. And I told her to go to the Psalms because that's what I do and to start in the twenties. And here I am, Psalm 27. What a gift today for me from my father on this Sabbath day. Thank you, God. I love you, you love me, we are one. I dwell in your house forever. I seek your face, I believe, I wait, I am strong in you alone. Praise the Lord, whom shall I fear? The Lord is my light and salvation. You know, in difficult weeks and things are coming at us and God just brings his word to life through his Holy Spirit, it's powerful and it's real. And it reminds us that he is with us always. And that's the case with the author of this Psalm itself, Psalm 27. This is a Psalm of David. And David was probably fearing for his life when he wrote this Psalm. Either that or he was reflecting back on a time when he was fearing for his life, when King Saul himself was after David. So he moves, he's moving around. He's going from cave to cave. He's hiding uh, from the darkness or hiding in the darkness. He's afraid for his life. He's being attacked, betrayed. He's wanted dead or alive. This is the reason David wrote this. All right, you talk about surface tension. You talk about fear. And I really love what David says here and how God used David's words in Psalm 27 way back then to meet us right where we are, right where I was on that day and right where most of us are today in Psalm 27, facing the fears of our life right here and right now in this moment. Because we, in order to break that surface tension, in, we wanna become that church. We wanna be a church that's not afraid. We wanna be people. We wanna be those parents. We wanna be those followers of Jesus that even in the midst of our fear, we trust God. And that's what David was writing about. So right in the middle of the surface tension, we read these words from David. And what does he open with? Look at verse one. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You see those words? These are trust words. Do you believe these words today? I mean, could you just say those words? In fact, let's just do this together. Let's say these words together with, with David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Do you believe those words today? Can you say those words out loud today and really know in the middle of your gut that they're true? Because David has pointed this out to us. This is where David is living right now. There is no one or nothing to be afraid of compared to who God is. He is our light. He is our salvation. He is our stronghold. He is our life. This is the foundation of David's trust, the Lord God himself. And this is where we need to start. This is where he starts and this is where we must start by believing this in order to break the surface tension of fear. Our trust has to be in something greater, something deeper, something bigger than the fear that we have ourselves. Our trust has to be in the power and in the presence of almighty God. If we're going to break the tension, our trust must be in something greater than our fear. The power and the presence 
of Almighty God. David knows this. He knows something bigger than the tension that he's in. David knows the power and the presence of God himself. He knows it. He knows it. He knows it. He is saying it. He is claiming it. He is writing it down so that we can read it today. And this, and it is shaping his life, even in the tension that he's experienced on a daily basis. This is real fear that David has and is writing about. In fact, it's personal, personal. How personal is it? Let's look at the next verse, two and three. In fact, as I read this, I'd love you to just point out the the words me and my in this and, and in the midst of the evildoers and the enemies that are coming at him. Look at the words of David, Psalm 27, two and three. When evildoers assail me, me, to eat up my flesh. And you thought you had stuff to be scared about. Cannibals chasing him around or something. Evildoers assail me, they eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes. It is they who stumble and fall. Verse three, though an army encamps around me, an army encamping around me, my heart shall not fear. The war arises against me, against me. I will be confident. The Hebrew word there is trust. This is personal for David. Playtime's over. He is afraid. He is being honest with God. There is not a hint of denial here in these words. And I believe this is an invitation for us to get personal as well. So let's go. Let's go. Trust time. Like David, we can break that surface tension. In order to do that, we need to admit our fears. We need to expose them, not hide them. Not hide them from ourselves, not hide them from the people who love us, can help us, and certainly not hide them from God who knows our hearts already. Trust starts here. See, if we're gonna break the surface, then we need a safe place to go deep and to be honest with our fears and then take them and offer them up to God. And that can start right now. But look, this is hard work. I'll try not to get on a tangent here. Beth, again, this isn't in my notes, but this is real stuff. Like we've got to be honest with God about our fears. This began as when I was a kid. Um, I found out very quickly that I was uh, afraid of public speaking. It terrifies me. I know, weird, but God has a sense of humor. But uh, I literally failed English class because I had to do an oral book report before my class and I was not having it. I would get sick and skip preaching class in college because I would not get up in front of my own friends and talk out loud. Terrified of public speaking. And I thought, all right, there's my fear, right? No, wait a minute, hold on, time out. There's something else here. I need to be still and I need to listen. I need to go deeper with God on this. Am I really afraid of public speaking? Honestly, no. Honestly, I'm afraid I'm gonna fail. Like Seth said earlier, I'm afraid you're not gonna like me. I'm afraid people are gonna judge what I say and maybe think less of me because of it. That's a little deeper fear than public speaking. Afraid I'm gonna look silly. It, but is that it? I, I don't know. I, let's, let's be a little bit more honest. Let's go a little bit deeper. Uh, deeper, in fact, to me, my childhood. When I said something or did something that made people laugh at me or hearing from my parents, you can do better, you're not good enough. See, this... This is where it gets personal. This is where this this tree of fear that we see on the surface goes deep and it becomes the roots. And we have to allow God through his Holy Spirit to do this deep and inner work with us. And when we do that, and I know some of us are even afraid of doing that, then we can begin to experience the goodness of God, the, 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 the grace and the forgiveness and the redemption that God has for us. So we need to get personal. 
if you were writing this this morning, if you were to put yourself in the place of David, who or what would be your evildoers? Who are your adversaries, your enemies, your foes? Do you have an enemy army that you feel like is just waging war against you? What's bringing out your inner Sadie? What's freaking you out right now? Be honest. Because I know some of your stories. And we can walk around here dancing with smiles on our face all day long, but the fact is you're scared to death of that cancer diagnosis. Your husband, your wife, your mom, your dad, they're, they're sick, they're dying. And you don't know what you're gonna do without them. Your job, that new baby, <laughs> that class you're failing. What in the world are we gonna do with this fear? We need to be honest about it and it's personal. And this is exactly where we need to be when it comes to our relationship with God. You see, God meets us right where we are when we meet with him. And in the midst of our fears, our hearts can lean into God and learn to trust him face to face. And that's when his Holy Spirit begins to minister to us from the inside out, minister to our very souls. And then, and then we can do as David says, listen to this, listen to what he says. My heart shall not fear. My heart shall not fear though war wages against me. I will be confident. I will trust. See, here's the thing. David didn't allow, he didn't allow his fears to define him and shape him. He allowed his fears to redirect him, to trust in the Lord that redirected him. Look at verse four. One thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after. I'm gonna seek after, see, he's this redirecting him to seek something. Look what happens. One thing I've asked for that from the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Listen to these words, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. I love this. In the midst of fear, trust brings David to seek God, to dwell in his house, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. See, it's a change of direction. It's a change of perspective. David is choosing to gaze upon God's beauty. Circle that verse. Understand, highlight that. And this is where we can bring our fears to God. And then he goes on, he says, to inquire in his temple. He turns to the one bigger than his fears. And this house that David's talking about, the, the, the temple of the Lord. Now this would have meant something different to David. It was a tent, um, maybe in the past that he's thinking about, or the tent of, you know, right there in the present or even in the future. We don't know. But we do know that the tent that David's talking about is where God dwelled. The presence of God dwelled in that tent. The point is being with God matters most. Being with God matters most in the midst of fear. And today, today we can know on the other side of the cross and the empty tomb of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings who rose from the grave. We can know that in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he lives inside of those who call him king and follow him. God lives in us. See, when we turn to Jesus and we're baptized, as Acts 2.38 says, the Holy Spirit of God himself comes to live inside of us. So we are the temple of God. And I, and I don't think it's a stretch at all to say that to break the tension of our fears, to go all in with God, to experience his goodness and his grace, we can seek him, we can dwell with him all the days of our lives, everywhere we go, everywhere we see, every, always, he is with us always. And we can gaze upon his beauty. I love what Linwood said last week as he pointed to the words of Jesus and he said, as we abide in Christ and Christ abides in us. See, we don't have to go to a temple or a tent or a tower. We can seek him and gaze upon his beauty and worship him wherever we are. So I'm begging you today, slow down, be with God, take the time. Make space where you can be with the Lord who lives inside of you 
and hear his voice and know his presence and praise him, praise him, praise him. And look what happens. He will hide me in his shelter, verse five. He will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. In the midst of our fears, he will hide me in his shelter. He will conceal me under, his co- under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices. In his tent, I will offer praise and worship to God and sacrifice shouts of joy. In the midst of fear, he said, in shouts of joy, and I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Y'all see this? God is meeting David right where he is, and he will meet us as well in the midst of our fears. Our hearts can lean in and learn to trust him face to face. The spirit of the living God will minister to our very souls as we praise him, as we shout for joy, and as we sing to the Lord. I know it's complicated. We have all this fear in this hand, and yet we worship in this hand. And what is that? Man, it's, what do we do with all of this? And I would just encourage you today, yes, be personal, acknowledge your fears, and then bring them into the presence of God. You see, the key to breaking through the surface of our fears is not to remove them, but to move them into the presence of God. The key to breaking through the surface tension of our fears is not to remove them, but to move them into the presence of God. And that means praise. Praise the Lord. And I'm so glad we do this every single Sunday. We get together as the body of Christ and we praise the Lord in the midst of everything you're going through, everything that we're going through in life. And I know there are people here this morning who are facing fear. You're facing something in your life you didn't expect, uncertainty. And you are dancing and singing and praising and shouting joy to God in the midst of it. And I praise God for that. What an inspiration you are. And I know it's hard and I know it's difficult, but you are singing to the lover of your soul and praising him in the face of cancer, in the face of trials, sitting in a VA clinic, waiting to know what in the world's going to happen next. And you are praising God, even online. Praising God above knowing he's going to lift you up and he's going to support and love and minister to you in a way that no one else on earth can. And that's not all. Look what happens. David does more than sing. Look at verse seven. (laughs) Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me, answer me, because you have said, seek my face. And my heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. Is David actually having a conversation with God here? I mean, it seems like it. How? Prayer. Prayer, that's how. And, and, And it's real. Like David is bearing his heart to the Lord here. He's quoting God's word. He's quoting God's promises back to him. And in prayer, he leans in even more. He's having this one-on-one time with God. And I know this is not unusual to pray when we're facing fear. Like, ah, help me, get me out of this. You know, like I'm freaking out right now. Help me, Lord. You know, yes, that's true. But this is, this is, this is different. This is more than that. This is so relational. Look at these words. This is honest. These are trust words. Look at verse nine. Hide not your face from me. It's like David saying, God, look, look just don't, 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 turn, don't turn away. Look, turn not your servant away in anger. Turn around. You've been my help. Cast me not off. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. Verse 10. For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. You know, back in January when I journaled through this for the first time, uh, I won't read the, the journal entry, but, but these words, they hit me right in the heart. Because sitting there in the quiet, I realized my parents are gone. He didn't forsaken me, but they've left me to go to Jesus and I miss them and it hurts. 
in that moment, in this prayer, saying, God, I need you to take me in. I need you to parent me. Parent me. I need you to fill that void where my mom and dad used to be. Be my salvation. And God said, I'll take you in. Trust me. Trust me. See, I'll look, prayer. Prayer is not just a checklist. It's not a shopping list. It's talking to our Savior, our protector, our Father, who we can trust, even in the face of fear. Prayer. So today, if you need help praying, if you're not sure what that means, I promise that's what this church is for. We're here to do this together. We're learning together. Talk to somebody. Let's do this together. Talk to somebody, ask them to help you teach. In fact, you can come up front after the service and we'll pray not just for you, but pray with you. Make a phone call during the week. But I don't think it's because most of us don't know how to pray that we don't pray. I think it's, I think it's that we just are afraid to, or we don't want to bad enough. We need to break the surface tension. You say, I don't know how to pray, or what if this, and what if that, or, you know, what if I say the wrong words? What if, what if I sound stupid, or I don't know what I'm doing? You know, what do I, look, break the surface tension and experience God's presence in praise and in prayer. Verse 11, David says, teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my enemies. He goes on, Lord, teach me. Teach me your way. Lead me on your path. See, in the midst of fear, we, we tend to do this sometimes. We can't do this. In the midst of fear, we can't disappear. We can't deflect or deny or do our own thing. We just want to jump out ahead and start solving our problems and start pretending. No, 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 wait. We have to desperately, look, this is desperate. David's words are desperately turned to God in surrender. Trust God's leadership. And if we are spending time in praise and in prayer, God will lead us. Trust his leadership. Verse 12, give me not up to the will of my adversaries or false witnesses. They have risen up against me. They breathe out violence. We talked about this in our last series. The surface tension is real, but so is God. And our hope in this culture of lies and violence is to trust the Lord. Trust. And that brings hope. Fear does not bring hope. Trust brings hope. And hope is where David is going with this. Look at verse 13. I believe, I believe. These are hope words. Again, I believe trust words. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You see the hope there? Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. David is saying, follow his path to goodness, to life, to strength, to courage. And someday, yes, that path leads us somewhere. God's path always leads us somewhere. So wait for the Lord. Wait for the Lord. And you might not see deliverance. You might not conquer your fear today, tomorrow, or the next day. Wait. Trust. Follow him and wait. Take a step. Wait. Take a step. Wait. Don't get out ahead of them. Don't drag too far along. Just wait on the Lord. Walk God's path to goodness, to life, to courage, and to hope. And along the way, as we wait, as we follow, along the way, we might just discover that the goodness of God isn't just in the destination, the land of the living but it's in the journey that we take along the way. What is God teaching me through all of this stuff, this fear? He's teaching us to trust, to trust him, to trust him, to wait, to trust him and wait. Follow his path. To help do that, I want you to take a look in your bulletins again, these inserts that 
Um, this is helpful for me. And as you notice, you're gonna, in fact, I promise, even in things that have been fearful to me throughout my life, this is the track. This is what David does all through this. So this is just a trust experience and we can do this week. Break the tension, trust in the midst of fear this week. All right, read. I wanna just invite you to start by reading Psalm 27. <laughs> Just take some time to sit and read and journal through Psalm 27 or pick another scripture that you appreciate and just meditate on that. Reflect on God's power and presence. That's what David has done here. Take time to sit still and then do what David did this week. It's a trust experience. Make time in your very busy schedule to answer these questions. What am I really afraid of? Where are my fears? Write them down, all of them, anything. Let God take you to those deep places. Write down the what ifs. Like, well, I don't know if I'm afraid of this, but what if this happens? And what if that happens? What if she does this? What if he says that? What if I fail? What if I fall down? What if I break down? What if this happens? Write those down too. If they scare you, write them down. Am I overthinking this? What, what's going on in my head and my heart right now? And who will I talk to about these fears? Get personal. Next, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's what David does. Make time with the Lord this week to gaze upon his beauty and sing praise to him. Not just here, this is a great hour we spend together, but praise God all throughout the week. In fact, whenever you feel your pulse rise and you feel that fear coming, praise the Lord. Find a time to do that and pray. Pray to the Lord. Find time to pray. Experience his presence. Get alone with God. Cry out to him in prayer. Seek his face and experience his presence. Pray. Just talk to him. When will you do that? How will you do that? Make time and then follow his path. We can decide today to follow his level path because God will lead you somewhere. He may lead you to literal things that you can do to break the tension of fear in your life. God might lead you to finally join that small group that you've been thinking about. But what if and what if and finally join that group? Maybe go to that care group like Celebrate Recovery where these fears are just dominating you to the fact that you're now abusing your body with drugs and alcohol or whatever and you're trying to escape from the fears by some other way. Look, head over to Celebrate. Do, do so. God is going to lead you somewhere. Break that tension. Maybe now is the time God's going to lead you to that doctor or that counselor or that help that you need. Maybe God would even lead you to stop watching the news. <laughs> Disengage from social media. Look, I know it's October and millions of dollars are spent on, on, on scaring people this time of year, but maybe God would lead you to stop watching those horror movies late at night. follow his path. And I would invite you more than anything to read God's word, meditate, journal, and follow what he says, especially regarding fear. Again, there's hundreds of passages. I picked a few that are in your bulletin today. Just spend some time meditating and, and processing these verses from God this, about fear. And by the way, this, this path, this is the path to Jesus. Jesus, the son of God, this is the path to the one who came from heaven to earth so that we could go to the Father through him and into the presence of the Holy One. Jesus is the God of Psalm 27.1. He is the light of our salvation. He is the stronghold of our life. Jesus Christ lived and died and rose again to prove that he is God and to prove that God loves us and he wants to go deeper with us and we actually can because of what Jesus did and who he is so that we could experience life with our Father in heaven. And I hope and pray that you know Jesus today. And if not, you can. You see, Jesus is the reason that we have hope. He's the reason that we can trust. He takes us through the surface tension into real life with the Father. God's Holy Spirit will lead us as we follow Jesus, as we walk with him and in him. God is with us. Jesus shows us that. He leads us there. God is with us. He is for us. so that we can say and we can echo the words of David himself with God being with us, whom shall we be afraid? Of whom shall I be afraid? These last few weeks in the series, we've used this tank. Um, it's been pretty cool and I know I'm late. So get a little carried away up here, but I gotta show you this. This is uh, 
this fish tank, you guys remember this? You've been here? All right, this is not a fish tank, it's a tank of water. There's no fish in there. But this water, uh, this water represents the goodness and depth and grace of God. This, this water, this, this, this that whole thing represents what happens when we decide to break the surface tension and go deep uh, with God. So that's what we've done over the last couple of weeks. And, and we've used these feathers to represent our lives and how if we're not, we'll just kind of spend life on the surface. There's a tension there that's holding that feather on the surface of God's goodness, of God's grace, of life in him. And this is what we do. We just kind of float around and fear does this to us, keeps us on the surface. But if we allow him to, God will do something incredible. We've used these rocks to represent God himself. This rock represents the Lord God Almighty, who we can come into his presence, who we can tie ourselves to. And when we do this and we allow him to take us below by the power of his spirit, to take us below the depths with him, to live in the goodness of God. We break that tension. You know, there's honey in that rock. There's sweetness there. There's goodness there. And he wants to take us to places we've never been to experience him in ways we never have. But we have to break that tension, especially that surface tension of fear and go there with him. And we have to answer that question, whom shall I be afraid of? Seth talked about it earlier. Romans chapter eight says, if God is for us, who should be against us? And he starts in Romans eight, it says that nothing can separate us from the love of God. When we are living in the Holy Spirit, we have no reason to fear. But trust me, just as we've said earlier, the world's gonna throw all kinds of stuff at us. And we just have to start asking questions like if the world starts throwing stuff at us and we've got fear in our lives, whom shall I be afraid of? And I wanna answer that question with nothing because we are in the depths with God. He is surrounded us and attached himself to us and we have attached ourselves to him and now we are there with him. So of whom will I be afraid? When the enemy comes against us, of whom will I be afraid? These little army men. No, they're not going to touch us. Why? Because we are in the goodness of God. Remember, bring it on, man. They're not, they're not going to touch us. Why? Because we are attached to the goodness of God. He is there with us. The Holy Spirit is in us. And what are they going to do? I'm afraid to speak up for my faith. I don't know that I want to get baptized. The minute I become a Christian, people are going to start throwing rocks at me at work. They're going to start flinging insults. They're going to start teasing me. Or maybe I don't think I can. What if this happens? And what if that happens? Guess what? Nothing's touched that feather. That is us in the presence of God and nothing can touch us when we are in his presence. We are living in his goodness. Man, I said, bring on the storms, bring on the heat. I got more. Bring it on. I mean, look, it, nothing's going to touch that. Feather. Look, you might blow me around a little bit, but nothing's going to touch me. Bring on the rain, bring on the storms. I know this might hit a little close to home. This flood, man, it took some of us out. But you know what? Or it didn't take us out. We're afraid for our homes sometimes. The floods come, the storms come. Look, you may swirl around me. Still there. You want to live your life on the surface? Guess what? You're going to be in trouble. Bring on the heat. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not staying on the surface. Uh-uh, this is where we want to be. This is where we want to be when the heat comes. What can separate us from the love of God? If God is for us, who can be against us? No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Bring on the, hello. <laughs> heat, ha <laughs> ha. Look, you want to live your life on the surface in fear. Or do you want to live your life attached to the one who lives eternally and who one day we will be in the presence of forever and ever and ever and ever and ever praising his name where there will be no more fear and there will be no more, no more war and there will be no more rocks and there'll be no more. Look, time is now. And I'm begging you today, break that tension. Break that surface tension of fear. Don't let the what ifs hold you back. Trust in him. Trust in him. Yeah, the fire's gonna come. The rocks are gonna get thrown. Trust in him. And that can begin right now today. Maybe today you've been like, man, I, I, I don't know that I can become a Christ follower. 
What if this, what if that? Look, I promise you today, surrender your life to God and let him do, the, do, it, do what he's gonna do. Don't let fear hold you back. You can be baptized into Christ today. Or maybe today God is waiting to break this stronghold in your life and you just need to let him have it once and for all. Say, you know what? I'm afraid, I'm scared, I'm, I'm fearful, but I'm going to pray and I'm going to praise God in the midst of my fear. That's what we're here for this morning. Our prayer team will be up front to pray. Maybe you wanna grab somebody next to you and pray before you leave today. Maybe you just wanna praise God in a different way today. Take your fears to him and praise him in your seats, on your knees, up front. Do not leave today. Do not leave today without bringing this to him. Look, we're here to be in the presence of God together. We're here together. God says, perfect love drives out fear. God is love. And we love one another in this place. So let's strengthen each other and encourage each other and pray together and praise together. And let's go to the deep together. Father, we love you. We praise you. Transform us from the inside out. God, we trust you. We trust you. And right now we are going to sing and we are going to pray and we are going to live in that trust. Thank you for your son, Jesus. It makes all this possible and it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's sing.